guys. I'm going to review the Panther A Late Production Premium. Now, uh, I, I've talked a bit about premiums in the past in my sort of overview videos, but I want to make something uh, pretty clear about this guy here. So this came out in 2007, I want to say. Yes. So 6358, which is this, is essentially this old kit 6168 from 2002. Now, that's not a lot of time between them, 2002 and 2007. It's like five years. Um, that doesn't seem like a lot to me anyway. They are, for the most part, the exact same except for on the premiums, the D and the A, they upgraded the suspension so that instead of molded-on torsion bars in the lower hull, you had separate swing arms. Um, and then, uh, for the premiums anyway, they had metal barrels and you'll have shirts and stuff. But that's the majority of what they upgraded. They put in magic tracks instead of a sprue full of tracks and they fixed the suspension. For the most part though, the rest of it is that old kit. The only new, new part in this is this um, MG mount. Everything else in this kit is either from its origin kit, 6168, or was made for 6299, the D premium, or came from any of those G series Panthers that started in about 06. So if you think about the progression of these Panthers, they made a tooling in 02 that for that time was meh, whatever, and they, I think they made about four of them, right? And then that uh, the Panther G series came out with a completely new tooled everything, with the, the torsion bars and the swing arms, and then they basically just started back fixing their A's and D's and stuff. And to this day, they still haven't retooled the, the early Panther uh, stuff. So even the one that's coming out in 2015, there's a new D, I think it's a DV2, which was like a, a secondary prototype, still based on that old kit, 6168 from 2002, or 6164, I think was the old D. So that's important to know, because yes, these are good and can be built up very nicely, but they are older. So let's look at it. Um, For an A, I might go Normandy. Let's see. Maybe that one. I don't know what to do with an A. I have very strong opinions about what a D should look like, Kursky, and a G should look late war, but A's, I guess, would be sort of Italian or could be Normandy-ish looking. So there's the PE. You've got standard grills and always these bits to make up a chain. Looks like there's a number of decals in there. So here they're showing essentially what's been changed from the old kit, if you, if you know what you're looking for. The old kit had the molded on swing arms. This does not. It does not have the internal torsion bars, but it does have separate swing arms. It has magic tracks, more than likely not handed, because for some reason Dragon never tooled handed magic tracks for Panthers. Don't know why. They do this and kind of make you... They sell it like it's a good thing, and it's not. Um, what it means normally is that you need this to go around the, the drive sprocket. It's not for maximum accuracy. It's so that it fits correctly. This um, is the only new part tooled for the kit, this guy here, with the full mount with the ball thing, and then here is what I'm assuming is the the cupola from the G series, because it's the same cupola anyway. Alright, so, advertised metal barrel, which is in here. Three-part muzzle brake, this pretty standard breech assembly we've been seeing on Panthers for a long time, the multi-part PE chain for the lock, clear periscopes, which I just paint, Three-part headlight isn't really a selling point anymore for me. Newly updated turret. Now, what they mean by this is that I believe they did go back and tweak it, tighten it up, if you will, uh, alter the tooling a bit. It's still based in the same mold, but it's updated. This close support weapon just probably stems from one of their Tiger kits. It can be molded open or closed. Apparently, you can't. That's not workable. 
There's all the PE that goes in the back. I like this because that's a nice touch. The the mesh that goes over there, I usually aftermarket that on, on Tamiya Panthers and stuff. That's a little scary, but it is all right angles. So in theory, it should be easy enough to handle. The PE for this, I think, was to upgrade the old part. They could have used the plastic ones from their Smart Kit Panther G series. I don't know how, how different those storage boxes are. Uh, and then the shirt sim, which is very cool. That it's in scale like that. So looking at the instructions, here is kind of what I'm talking about with, this is a Panther G sprue with its uh, torsion bars and swing arms, but they're not used. So it's from the, the more modern tooling of it. And then the rest of this stuff, where you see blue, I'm going to assume is the older sprues that have been updated with other parts, possibly, but um, average amount not used PE looks pretty intense. So with these premium Panthers, you get these old school color instructions, which are universally hated as far as I know. Uh, sometimes it's nice because it's a little more crisp, the view of what it should look like when it's on there, but it's not a very good diagram. So here is the swing arms, which are just the arms, which will be separate. Uh, the wheels will be relatively simple, two piece or one piece, I'm guessing, assemblies, four part idler. And then I'm not sure if there's an option for a different sprocket cap like that. And the final drive housings. Not much to report here. So it has the earlier exhaust with the three pipes here, the two intakes and the two exhausts. I like this method of um, stowage bin with this piece and this piece. Just looks good. Here's where we get a little complicated. Um, you start adding tiny little PE stuff into the back here. There's also an upgrade for the top of this piece, excuse me, here. Uh, and then there's etch for this as well, which will be a little fiddly. I'm not sure how much bending you have to do, I'm assuming a lot. So if you have to bend like a, like a round shape into this where it bends at 90s, that could be a pretty big pain. Then here's your now standard multi-part Bow MG. Lots of little plastic bits going on the deck, which is fine. Um, it's pretty standard light. Here you have these PE segments of a chain to put together to form this thing. I'm going to guess, yeah, there's a plastic option for that, which I might go for. There's also both options in plastic and PE, where you can have it either closed or open. Sponson's going on here. So this has always been intimidating to me, but I still think it can be done. The PE extra track holders. But the problem with premiums, at least I see it as a problem for me, and there is an option, excellent. Um, I think. Yep. Yeah. So here's your plastic tools, which will be from the old, old tooling. And then here's what they expect you to do, because it's premium. So all PE clamps, all one of those tiny sprues with just tools without clamps on them. A lot of etch that goes around the barrel cleaning rod tube. Yeah, more clamps on the other side. That part doesn't look fun to me. This whole section, steps 15, 16, it's all tiny little PE clamps going on tool assemblies or wussing out and using the old stuff, which will be pretty outdated. You won't have real good clamps. You'll just have these little raised bits instead of like proper looking clamps. And then here is a couple of layers of PE for this vent. I like that. I've done that upgrade myself before. And now we go to the 
turret. So it's a slide molded one piece. I think the breech assembly is all pretty old though. Not the three piece muzzle brake. The turret, not much to, to talk about there, pretty basic thing. There's not a lot of interior in this either. And a lot of this stuff is very, it looks kind of old school. There's the cupola, but these aren't shown as clear. They're shown painted with clear bits, so I'm going to assume they're clear. There's the bit with the magic tracks telling you to use the separate guide horn pieces from here to here, just so they can fit inside the sprocket. So there, when you cut some little bits off of the fenders, it's weird that it's weathered right here. That like it goes from just not to, um, and then they're showing the shirt thing going on. So, marking options are Poland 44, either winter washed or not, uh, both Viking. As is this one, Gross Deutschland, and then Italy, and Totenkopf. Uh, I don't. I don't know. But it's a lot of options, a lot of decals, so. So the dragon card is pretty full, I guess you'd call it. You've got two separate bags for each side of Schurzen, which are very small. Pretty thin, seems correct. Multi-part MG sprue. The cupola not on a sprue, which I like. There's the clear parts. There's all your decals, metal barrel, which I know is sometimes getting left out of these, which is a subject people are talking about quite a bit, this one has it, your tools without clamps, and then this pretty intense PE sprue, which is pretty much grills, um, the chain options for the travel lock, these X bear track holder bits, which is over here as well, and then this stuff. Not a whole lot. And then PE clamps. One, and then these are for the, the stowage things in the back, so it's not as intimidating when you know what the parts are. Magic tracks, for whatever reason, which has become standard, are not handed. They will be... These are late, which is correct, with ice cleats. Um, I'm fine with it. They have uh, hollow guide horns, so I have no problem using them. Very good. First brew, which I can't even get in shot. There we go. This is huge. This is actually... Um, they don't make sprues this big anymore, I don't think. Um, normally these days you get the upper hull and the turret on in by themselves in little bags. So, And that hasn't been changed. This is an updated kit but they still kept that sort of style of thing, so... Um, see how close I can get to so this. This is something that annoys me. These connection points on the hull. Uh, I suck at cleaning them up, so... There's usually like a little... marring. Because to get that plane correct without losing any surface detail is difficult. Apart from that, the deck looks pretty good. I may have left this antenna mounting is separate, or this is separate, I'm not sure why those are molded on. Then the turret, which also is annoying to get sprue gates off of. Both of them have... The hull has a pretty good rolled steel to it. The turret seems a little too smooth. For my taste. It's not like Tamiya smooth, but it's not as textured as the side of the hull is. The welds look good though. But it doesn't it doesn't quite feel like it's up to modern standards to me, but it's pretty good. Uh, bottom of the turret. 
pretty standard fare. These will be the back of the, the little parts that shoot down in the rear of the upper hull. I think they're technically backwards there, yep. Man, this thing is huge. So, rear plate also looks pretty plain, and it's got some of these old school raised markings right here for mounting stuff. I don't really like that. I'm not sure that all this is used either. Here you've got the plastic travel lock stuff and what looks honestly like an older style um, jack. And then your stowage boxes, which look pretty good. And there's the other piece of them right there. That's the main one. Um, here is one of many, uh, not many, one of a few, Panther G sprues. So this is going to, and I was a little wrong in that, so the breech dates from the 06 Panther G tooling. And then here's your slide molded barrel, which honestly I'm fine with. I don't really care if they're metal or not, so. There's your three-piece muzzle brake. Turret MG mount. This is like a splash guard or rain guard, I think, that goes over top of the turret. These breeches look pretty good to me. This this part of the assembly. I'm not sure that all of this is used, but I'm gonna guess you would probably use that hatch. That's a decent uh, jack block. Normally there's this kind, and then there's the kind that it's the wood block, and then the plastic piece for the bracket that's separate. There's the close defense weapon thing. So what, there was something major in here, Panther G related, that they took out, so... But that's what essentially the gun you use. Then you've got four, I believe, of these. Now that's a little weird. So, at least it confused me at first. So here is the Panther G suspension system, including its separate bits for, where's the words? There are different types of torsion bars and swing arms for steel wheel versus standard, so those say steel, these don't. You don't use these at all, and that kind of confused me when I first looked in here. What you use is these. So, you only get this sprue for the wheels, and probably the tracks with the separate guide horns. A little annoying that they couldn't uh, use these. I don't know how different the swing arms are on an uh, A versus a, a G, but you get a whole extra suspension system for a Panther in here. Wheels look as good as Dragon Wheels do, which is better than Tamiya Wheels. There's some bump stops as well. I'm not sure if we use those. I think not. I'm not sure. But you get a bunch of these because Panthers have nearly as many wheels as Tigers. And we got this guy. This is another um, updated from the old school kit of uh, D and A, so the older hull style. These are the Sponsons, which there's not much to write home about, because they're like fender on the front, and then just sort of ejector pin mark heavy, you'll never see it. I mean, there's, there's rivets here, or whatever this is, but there's also big marks here. I probably wouldn't bother filling them, but there's the engine deck, or the engine hatch. And the hatches for the front. But you can even see just by the style of molding, this is sort of older. Here's the two halves of the barrel cleaning rod slash whatever else they put in their tube. The older tools with their outdated style clamps. That jack block. 
I think is more correct for an A. So that one I showed before, I think is just a G jack block, and then these are the, the racks for the tools. A couple of grab handles, nothing terribly special. I think these are the hangers for the shirts in there. It's cool. But yeah, it, everything looks fine, but, and it may be slightly retooled, but this is an, an older sprue from about 2002 as well. As I think this guy is. So this we won't be using because this is a Panther D's front plate, or glaces. So that's the mailbox flap for the MG, which A's don't have, D's do. Um, let's see. That looks like the thing that you tow things from on the rear. Real technical terms today. Another rear plate. Not quite sure what these two are. Another cupola MG ring, so I've seen two of those already. That looks to be like what goes in the rear, possibly an inertial starter kind of thing, or access to something. Everything on here looks fine, but again, a little bit older style. And we got two of these. Now this is the original gun, so you can see it's a proper two halves of a barrel. Don't want to use that type thing. You have the plastic bits for the uh, vent, whatever. Fans in the back. You've got the vortex dial on the left and the straight one on the right. There's the plastic option for the spare track hangers, which is close to the way that Tamiya does it without any holes. Basically just glue the tracks to it. No pins to hold them in. More spare track hangers, or uh, sorry, shirts and hangers. Here. Just the little bits. Like the headlight, some exhaust, obviously the sprocket. It does have a separate piece for this, which is good. The idler. So we use a lot of this, and I don't know how updated it is from its original form, but just grateful we don't have to use that. So here's a Panther A only sprue with the correct places, with the ball style MG, not the letterbox thing. There's the two intakes that go on the side of that exhaust. These, I think, are the covers for that other type of exhaust, like the D-style exhaust, or early G, I'm not sure. Another jack, another plate. This one looks correct for Panthers, or at least that I'm familiar with on the A. Now here's one mantlet. I'm not sure if we use it, though. Convoy lights. There's two mantlets in here. This texture on this one is pretty good. Here's the other one, which is on a sprue that says Panther A. So this could have been newly tooled, although I know I read that it was not. So there's the ring for the cupola, another hatch the later style. Here's the other mantlet. It's got a binocular sight. It also has good texture on it. So, coaxial MG hole, binocular sight with a rain guard. Look at the other one. Yeah, there is a difference there. The other one has a monocular sight. So that's the primary difference there. They, quality-wise, Sorry, I'm out of shot. Um, they look pretty similar. I'm not sure which would be correct. I'm sure they'll tell us. And then we've got... Oh, excellent. 
Maybe I won't. Well, I don't know how much this is used. These are tools with the clamps that I like, so good injection molded clamps. I, these don't look like panther tools, so the panther uses a much smaller axe and doesn't use this mount for the shovel, so I think these are just extra, which also is awesome because I can upgrade some other Tamiya kit or something. Now here's the suspension we do use. So that's why I was initially confused, there's two of these. And when I looked through it and I saw all those torsion bars and swing arms, I'm like, oh sweet, it does have the workable ones. Not so. You do only use those wheels and here's the swing arms you use. But the initial version of this kit that before it was a premium, uh, they had molded on swing arms like the old, old 70s kits. So I'm not complaining. I'm good with this. I don't like making suspensions workable anyway. But I know a lot of guys do, so. Now in here as well, we've got bump stops, idler, arm, and then just some other teeny little bits I can't quite identify. So, lower hull, I'm sort of impressed by the the supports in here, like it's, it's full structure. I mean, it's solid. A lot of times you can warp these things, this thing ain't going anywhere. Uh, it's the same one they use in the D Premium. That's very good. The detail on it is pretty up to modern standards. It's very crisp. So obviously they, they had to fix this when doing the premiums because the, the swing arms would have been just poking out of here. Overall, I, I, I like this idea, the premiums, because the the 2002 toolings of the A and the D um, would have been annoying. And I think from the kits of that era that I've built, there can be some fit, not necessarily issues, but the plastic can be a little wonky on the, uh, even the, the, um, the Yog Tiger I did from 2005, the suspension didn't fit terribly well, and this at least updated it enough where it's good enough for me. The only other game in town for an A anyways that I can even find is this, which is the first armor model I ever built, which is a Tamiya kit from the mid-70s. This is brush painted, and actually I never even finished, but... So, you know, I've, Panthers were my favorite when I started getting into armor, and I even actually got this kit to sort of do justice to what I wanted this one to be, and it never was. And apart from this ancient A, I mean, there are, there's just really no other game in town. So, you know, I, I really like the premiums. The, the PE stuff you're dealing with can be a little extreme, and these I think it's about mid-range. With things like the Ferdinand and the Nashorn in, in premium form, there's some, like, unnecessary PE. This just seems to be where it needs to be. You can, I think, choose to do the clamps, but you'll have dumbed-down detail if you don't. This has to be PE, um, but it's, it's not too bad. I think it's a very good kit. I think I got it, I probably got it for like 40. I don't know how available it is anymore. I know that they're putting out another D in 2015, but I think it's another like retooled premium style. It won't have metal stuff in it, but so keep an eye out for that. They haven't done a, a proper a retooling or new tooling of the A or the D ever, not since 02. So, thanks guys.